Okay, so yesterday we talked about how to find the standard deviation, um, basically what I call the old school style. And when you're talking about how to find it without using technology, then you have to use these two formulas. Now the standard deviation, if you are going to find the standard deviation for, this, for these chapter three scores, then what you would have to do is take each score, subtract the mean from each score, square each score, add every single one of those squares together, and then you would have to divide by the number of terms you have, and then take the square root at the end of it. So it is a significant process that we've tried to figure it out. You know, you're talking about 23 numbers. You're going to have to subtract 23 times. You're going to have to square 23 times. Then you're going to have to add all 23 numbers together. And then you're going to have, so we're look, right there, you're at 69 different places that you could make a mistake. So my guess is it's better for you to listen to me today and figure out how to find the standard deviation on your calculator. Every single person needs to press the stat button. Please go to stat. When you are at STAT, you will see the word EDIT is highlighted at first. You are going to press ENTER while EDIT is highlighted. And this is going to lead you to your L1, L2 page, which is where you're going to put your data in. Now, because our data is univariate, meaning one variable, every single one of these numbers needs to go into L1. There are 23 numbers in this set of data. Please put those numbers in your calculator. If you are going to put all of your data in L1, normally um, it depends on you, but you can type over whatever data is in there. But if you want to clear out that list, you press clear enter. You do not press delete on top of L1 because it will delete out the entire column. If you do, for some reason, delete the entire L1 column, then you can go to second insert, which is up at the top of your calculator. If you do second insert, it will put another column in there. And then if you look over top of your one key, there should actually be an L1, so you would hit second one, and then that would rename that column L1. You can also can just completely clear your memory again, because when you clear your memory, that's going to set you back up to L1, L2, L3. So, hopefully by now we all have all of our data in our calculator. After you put your data into the table, you are then going to press stat again. And you are going to arrow over to the right. When you arrow to the right, the first thing you should see is what? Number one is one B A R S T A T S, right? What that means is one variable statistics. This is one. So you can either press one. If you press one, then you only have to press enter once. If you highlight, one is already highlighted, so if you just press enter, then you have to press enter again. So either way, you are going to get a screen that has one variable stats at the top. And the first thing that you see is X with a bar over it. Everybody there? Tell me if you're not. Let me help you. This is what you need to write down. Please pick up a pencil and write this down with me. Because at some point, you are going to need something to reference as to what all of this is. If you have X with the bar over it, that is your mean. We talked about that yesterday. 
we used a x with the bar to represent our mean and in the population we used a Greek letter mu. Remember that? It looked like a U. The next thing that is going to be on your calculator is what letter is this? It is a sigma. It is means the summation of all terms in L1. That means we're going to add up all of the terms in L1. So that's going to be your summation of all the terms. In this case we put 23 terms in so it's going to add them all up. We then have the summation of your x squareds, correct? What I don't know. If Ned put it in right, you should have 1,725. Is that what you got? Good. You should have a mean of 75. You should have a summation of 1,725. And then your summation of x squareds is going to be 129,725. Now, the mean might be useful to us, right? Instead of having to add all those numbers and divide, you can definitely use this to find your mean. But what you are really going to be, or what I'm really excited about for you, is this S of X. The S of X, if you look back at what we were looking at yesterday, the S is the standard deviation for a sample. So when you see this, this is your standard deviation of, the sam of a sample. No, it's all of your terms squared and then added up. I think, and I'm not going to, I don't want to say 100% because I didn't calculate it. I think it is your x, like your terms minus the mean squared. Like what you would get underneath that radical for the numerator. Um, but I'll have to get back to you. I, I don't want to say one way or the other because... We don't, we're not going to use that in this class, but I'm pretty sure it's the summation of all of your terms minus the mean squared. But I can figure that out tonight. And then the sigma x is going to be your standard deviation of what? Thank you. Good, Kaylee. It just, yeah, you don't have to do any of that, no. All you have to do is put the data in. We're going to get them at 3.30. Right. Honestly, what we're going to use this app for is, is to find our standard deviation. If you know you have to find the mean and the standard deviation, then I wouldn't try to old school find the mean by adding them all up and dividing. I would just put all of it in my calculator, find my mean, and then my standard deviation. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, um, the next thing is N, right? There's an N, and that's just going to be your number... Yes. Well, underneath the sigma, yeah, it says 23, but that's your number of terms. You guys, then you, didn't, you lost one. Should be 23, number of terms. 
you should have you probably lost a 75 somewhere there are so many 75s now from here if you want to look at what the other things on that screen like if you arrow all the way down you see M I N X Q1 M E D Q2 um, or not Q2 Q3 and then M A X obviously the M I N is going to be your minimum it's your minimum in L1 the max is going to be your maximum what's the MED what do you think that's going to be the median and what are Q1 and Q3 no, not quadrants what okay what's in mm -mm. Think um, box and whisker plots, not quadr quartiles. So this is your first quartile. Yet, yes, you have. Well, you have first quartile and third quartile. Um, so it is nice if you want to find a representation in terms of your box and whisker for your data. Um, the interesting thing about this box, if you were to do a box and whisker, your first quartile, your median, and your third quartile, I think, weren't they all the same? A box and whisker plot, it, that's why we have quartiles. How many quarters are in a dollar? Four. four. So it's going to split our data up into four different um, sections. The first section is your lower extremes. Um, that is going to be your um, first 25% of your data from your minimum to your first quartile. The second quartile is going to be um, from the first quartile to your median, then from your median to your third quartile is the third 25% of your data, and from the third quartile to the max is your 25%. So, now it's time to practice.